Under Siege. So what do we have here? Looks like we got Tommy Lee Jones with aviators glued to his face and Steven Seagal itching to remove them. Also, there's some subplot stuff about a hijacked warship, nuclear missiles, and a Playboy Playmate. But who cares about that stuff? We're here to see Tommy Lee and Seagal face off in a kung fu knife contest. I'm Cringe Conrad. And his assistant will censor him if he steps out of line. Now get back in there and do your job. The movie starts off hot with a zinger delivered by stand-up comedian Steven Seagal. Don't let me hear about the joke when Andre and Boudreaux went hunting down on the bayou. <laughs> Where the guns? Where the guns, Julia? Yeah. <laughs> That's about right. Personally, I don't know what the hell he's talking about, but I guess I'm just not that cool. Next up, we got Gary Busey telling some guy that his concern over the security of the nuclear missiles aboard the ship is quite frankly, a nuisance. They're so secure, it's a waste of time to talk about it. And don't worry, there's no way Busey is secretly working with the bad guys. Soon after, it becomes clear that Busey and Seagal aren't exactly friends. Unless friends nowadays spit in each other's soup. And I've also never met any friends that punch each other in the face? But like I said, maybe I'm just not that cool. Before long, entertainment for the captain's party arrives, including Playboy Playmate, Jordan Tate. At which point we get a shamelessly gratuitous shot of her butt because this movie isn't very classy. Along with Ms. Tate is Tommy Lee Jones and the rest of his blues band sent to tickle the ears of these lonely seamen. But sadly, Tommy Lee reveals himself to be a murderous psychopath when he puts a bullet in somebody's brain and incites an all-out takeover from his hidden goon squad. I mean, jeez, who in the world vetted these gentlemen? Things only get worse when Busey runs upstairs and smokes the captain. So who's gonna save us now? Well, it certainly ain't this guy who tries to be a hero and flops like a pancake. Things are getting pretty heavy, but they simmer down a bit while the villains play catch. In fact, this might be the best throw and catch I've ever seen in cinema. And it turns out the disc they were tossing around is kind of important because it holds the power to boot up a 16-bit version of Battleship. Just look how amazed these idiots are at the power of this disc. Well, except for Tommy Lee, who wigs out because he hasn't had a snack in 15 minutes. Fuck her. Can we get something to eat in here? Yes, sir. Get some food. Yes, sir. For their next order of business, the goofballs send Tiny. mercenaries to murder Seagal, who's been locked in a freezer until now for decking an officer in the face. What transpires is the textbook way to clear a refrigerator, but Seagal isn't falling for it and gets ready to go to work. And work he does indeed, immediately sniping somebody with a knife and disappearing into the shadows. Then he gets his man hands on somebody else and squeezes until the vital parts snap. And after seeing what's been done to the poor captain, his quest for vengeance now begins. Meanwhile, Tommy Lee blows up a fighter jet and then explains why he's doing all this bad stuff. You know and I know that chaos and bedlam are consuming the entire world. UV light waves are only the beginning, Tom. We have an inch of topsoil left. Topsoil. This sexually transmitted disease is deforestation and reversibly progressive depletion of the global gene pool. It all adds up to a penny and pound. Governments will fall. Anarchies will reign. It's a brave new world. I guess since that was so disturbing, it's now time to reintroduce Jordan Tate, who's been hiding inside a birthday cake and oblivious to the gunshots and screaming. But sadly, Seagal doesn't find her nearly as charming as she thinks she is. Alright, who are you and what are you doing here? My name is Jordan Tate. I'm Miss July 89. What kind of babbling baloney is this? At this point, it's time to get the hype train started for Tommy Lee Jones. So his promoter from the CIA explains that the man is a renegade operative with a particular set of skills for hijacking stuff. In fact, there was recently a hijacked submarine that couldn't have been connected to Tommy Lee. Except it is connected to Tommy Lee. And the son of a bitch now owns both a sub and a boat. To put a cap on his ominous backstory, Tommy Lee explains how he's earned the terrifying moniker of Roadrunner. You're the Roadrunner? Yeah. Never been caught. 
Me, me. Meanwhile, Seagal tries to unload Jordan Tate by forcing her into a locker, but she keeps banging on the door, so he's forced to drag her along. To make her halfway useful, he gives her a quick Call of Duty lesson on how to get headshots. I'm gonna give you this assault rifle. It's an MP5. There's a selector switch on it. One is fully automatic, one is semi-automatic. The definition of semi-automatic is for when you depress the trigger one round will go off. That's what I want to give you. I want you to spend one round at a time, okay? Around this time, Tommy Lee realizes the Tiny. squad sent to end Seagal hasn't returned, so he goes to handle it himself. At which point, Seagal's perfectly timed microwave bomb goes off and Tommy Lee realizes he's got a major problem on his hands. Which is only made worse when Busey explains that Seagal is in fact an ex-Navy SEAL, while Tommy Lee tries not to vomit. Unbeknownst to Tommy Lee, Seagal reaches the top of the ship and sneaks around karate chopping anything that moves. And it seems as though he'd like to karate chop Jordan Tate if she asks any more dumb questions. But in Jordan's defense, nothing she said is dumber than Gary Busey's ultimate goal, which leaves even Tommy Lee absolutely bewildered. What are you gonna do when you get $200 million in the bank? Buy the presidency. Then, with a chippity and a choppity, Seagal blows up the goon's helicopter and starts swatting them like flies, which triggers Tommy Lee. This guy's a pain in the ass. Afterward, he stakes his claim for an Oscar when he meets up with his hidden teammates. Hey, Case, are you okay? Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. Then he displays his elite SEAL training by pulling off a move the rest of us could only dream of. And finally he gets fully in the zone showing off his knife jitsu skills, which consist of holding a blade awkwardly and flinging his hands around like he's doing the Macarena. At this point, the cavalry arrives as an elite team of Navy SEALs log on to the server, but they get logged off when they're easily spotted and shot out of the sky. And I don't think there's gonna be any response. Anyway, because Tommy Lee's mercenaries are incompetent, Seagal gains access to a freaking cannon and uses it to blow up his goddamn submarine. I mean, how in the world does this happen to an elite operative like Tommy Lee? And things get even weirder when Jordan Tate seems to be turned on by the bloodshed. You're telling me she's in love with the guy that just tried to lock her in a sardine can? After losing his submarine, Tommy Lee's command is compromised, and he launches missiles at Hawaii out of desperation. But even if the missiles reach the island, it's probably not that big of a deal, right? Approximately one million people will reach 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit in less than a second. Oh well, that actually sounds like a pretty big deal. Right on cue, Seagal's crew takes control of the ship while he teleports to the command center for the final showdown with Tommy Lee. These elite operatives each have a certain set of skills, and I can't wait to see what happens next. But before they engage in deadly combat, Tommy explains the real reason why he snapped. I got tired of coming up with last minute desperate solutions to impossible problems created by other freaking people. Well, if that's the case, anybody with a full time job is a serious liability. But that's a discussion for another day, because suddenly things escalate when Seagal boots his way into a kung fu knife fight. And now we're really doing the Macarena. I can't wait to see these elite commandos face off and see who's the best. Well, it turns out Tommy Lee never had a chance as he gets repeatedly sliced, knifed in the gourd, and then slammed into a radar screen for good measure. 
Looks like the skills were a little rusty versus Seagal's, which were nice and greased. Of course, now there's nothing stopping our hero from shutting down the missiles and turning on Ms. Tate, who seems to have completely forgotten the mistreatment that she suffered early on. And there you have it. Under Siege catapulted Steven Seagal into superstardom and exposed Tommy Lee Jones' knife skills as amateur at best. I'm Cringe Conrad, and thanks for joining me once again. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below.